you know what David Zosloff calls me? One Bill Phil. It's because I'm the one true genuine article in a business full of counterfeit bucks. More at the intro. T A G. That's tag shit. Free fall as I die through the kaleidoscope in my mind. No rope up to climb. Gotta remind myself that I'm fine. Mama, I don't really want. I know it's been a little bit, you know, work schedule has been wild, but it's your boy Scooter Ray, aka STR. And I'm here to give you this quick tag slash thoughts on the premiere of AEW Collision. Saturday night, it went down. The show opened up. I will say this I love the presentation, even though it kind of has that old school WCW feel. With the logo and everything, the set is nice. I love the presentation. The show opens up. We got Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGinnis as your commentary team. And who music hits? The one and only CM Punk. He comes out with a bag in hand, wrestling boots around his neck. And he's like, hey, I'm done being nice. I got these bars to get off. And, you know, he got his bars off. And as of now, we really don't know what's the relationship between him and the elite. But he took his shots, as you heard me say in the beginning. He took shots. Um, he basically was basically he kind of came off as that crotchety old man who's just like, look. I get your favorites. I get all that. But you hate me because I tell the truth and you love me because I tell the truth. They gave him about from intro to ending. It was about, about a good 20 something minutes. They let they let Punk get his bars off. And he was wrapping up because we find out in the red bag is his AEW title. And he was like, I never lost this. So technically, I'm still a champ, regardless of whatever's going on. And, you know, he was saying stuff like, like I said, he took shots at MJF. He took shots at the Elite, by the way of mentioning that, you know, counterfeit bucks. He took his shots. He, he 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 definitely took his shots in. It's gonna be interesting to see how this goes moving forward. Because like we had discussed in the previous pod, are the wrestlers who say they are supposed to be on collision? Because they specifically said CM Punk, Miro, Scorpio Sky, who had a segment, um, Thunder Rosa. Are these people just exclusively to Collision? Andrade, are they just in- exclusively to Collision? Or they can still go to Dynamite? Like, you know, that was never truly explained. But especially with uh, Punk acknowledging the fact that, you know, he never lost that world title, that sounds like he needs to be on Dynamite with MJF. Or it sounds like MJF. Needs to go to collision and go holler at a one bill Phil. But of course, the young bucks being the cheeky individuals they are, they tweeted. Well, not so much a tweet, it was their um status. If it was 2018, we would already have a counterfeit buck shirt on PWT. So it's just letting you know. They just letting you know. Like I said, shots were fired. He didn't mince words. I mean, of course, you know, he couldn't like curse like the way he did at the at the press conference at uh brawl out. But you know, he 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 got his bars off and we'll see how it goes forward. We'll see how 
Punk is viewed. And then plus two, it did also help that they were in Chicago. So it was probably going to be pretty hard that if people felt or feel a way about Punk, they was going to boo him in Chicago. But first match of the night, TNT Championship, Wardlow versus Luchasaurus, of course, accompanied with Christian Cage. Um, More and more, I don't know how I'm starting to feel about this TNT Championship. I really don't. Was it a good idea? Was it a great idea? Absolutely. Have I been agreeing with, like, the decisions and how they've been treating it? Yes, they have been doing this title all kind of weird. But, as you know, Warlow had the ladder match at Double or Nothing with Christian Cage. Warlow retained. He's having this match on collision with Luchasaurus. And due to some chicanery and some, t- and some cheap tactics, by the way of Christian Cage grabbing a DSLR out of uh, the cameraman's hands and busting Wardlow in the head with it twice. Luchasaurus gets the dub. Luchasaurus is the TNT, TNT, yeah, TNT champion. Christian Cage is celebrating with the title as if he won it. They even did the old school uh, Luchasaurus putting Christian on his neck and Christian holding up the belt. I don't even think Luchasaurus even touched the title. Yeah. Okay, match. I, I I'm just uh, with what they're doing with the TNT Championship. We'll see. Maybe maybe they got some grand plans. I don't know, but yeah. Next match: House of Blacks, Buddy Murphy versus the returning Andrade El Eagle. Now Andrade has been going because he had a was a torn bicep. I think it was a torn bicep, so you know he's been on the show. Then you know he had those weird rumors and things of you know his contract status and everything like that. And I also think he had that scuffle with uh Sammy. I think he had a little dust up with Sammy Guevara too backstage. So yeah, so it's been a while since we saw Andrade. And he's without the LFI. Uh so we don't know. If he's still affiliated with them at the moment, because he came out there solo. Uh, even of course, you know, Murphy came out there with Julia. But great match. Great match. Especially, it was a great palate cleanser from the TNT Championship, because that was just a hot fight, beefy boy brawl, as I like to call them. Great palate cleanser, because they let them boys go. They let them boys duke it out. Like, this was pay-per-view quality match. Reminiscent of the WWE days. Yeah, I said it. Shut up. But great match. Andrade gets the dub, which, I mean, returning match. He gets the dub. He tries to show some sportsmanship to uh, Buddy Murph. Buddy was like, Jamie Foxx, Denzel Washington, get your fucking hands on Now, there was one great sign that was in the audience. How did it go? Uh, Buddy. Buddy is something because Dami took his mommy. Something like that. But even Rhea responded. It was like, obviously you a fan of both and you still can't spell mommy right, which the person spelled it M-O-M-Y instead of M-A-M-I. But yeah. Uh, like I said, great match. Andrade tries to show sportsmanship. Buddy Murph. Get hands off me. The lights get dim. Well, not dim, but the lights go out. You know what I'm saying? You know what tends to happen when the lights go out. The House of Black arrives. Uh, Malachi in the corner, looking out ominous. And of course, you got Big Brody King. Right there. Big Brody King eventually hits Andrade with that big clothesline. And they stomp him out a bit. You know what I'm saying? They kind of they kind of rough up Andrade a little bit. And then let's go out. We out. Um Scorpio Sky 
had a, a segment and he's basically saying he's waiting for his moment. He's waiting for the right time and the right moment for him to show back up. So expect to see Scorpio Sky in a few weeks. Uh, there was two different segments throughout the show. Uh, Powerhouse House and QT, which Hobbs announced that he's going to be in the Owen tournament. Um, Absolute Ricky Starks announced that he's going to be in the Owen Hart tournament as well. Those two was Brooklyn, so we know at least two competitors on the men's side that's going to be in the Owen. I wonder is Adam Cole going to be in the Owen to kind of sort of defend? Like is Adam Cole and Dr. Baker are going to be in the tournament to kind of defend it to where, you know, kind of like how MJF defends that dynamite ring. I wonder are they going to require Cole and Britt to kind of defend it or are they going to just kind of let it be of whoever wins, wins. Next match, Tony Nese with smart Mark Sterling versus the returning Miro, the Redeemer. Man, it is good to see that man on TV. And Man's look good. Miro, Miro's always been a pleasure. Back when he was Rusev, said Miro, like his introduction first in the AEW was a little rocky, but Miro, and he, you know, he proved that he that dude, but as once again, he wasn't going to lose to Tony Nese, but he proved he that dude, and I'm kind of, and, 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 and I'm kind of intrigued to see what's going to happen with Miro going forward. I'm kind of intrigued to see because I don't know. Might be a good plan to put that TNT championship back on O'Meara. Or as an international champion. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, next up, we got the Outcast, Ruby Soho, Tony Storm, AEW Women's Champion. Versus NJP Strong Women's Champion Willow and Sky Blue. Of course, you know Sky Blue, hometown, Mama Blue in the audience. And this was Sky trying to get her lick back from Tony from their title match. And they do that. They get their lick back. Uh, Willow and Sky win. They get the dub, you know what I'm saying? Hometown celebration, you know what I'm saying? Get that hometown hero love for Sky Blue. It wasn't a bad match. Um, What did I say about it? You, you could tell it was really more for Sky Blue to get that to get that pop from the hometown because you know Ruby took the pin because you know Tony being champ and all it makes sense for Ruby to take the fall in this and like I said you get the moment of Willow and Sky mainly Sky get to celebrate especially because you know before the match even started they kind of revisited what happened. Uh, Wednesday when, you know, they was beating up Sky in front of Mama Blue. And even this time around, Mama Blue, Mama Blue got a chance to slap both Ruby and Tony still before the bell rung. But yeah, Willow and Sky gets the dub. We get the acclaim with Daddy Ass coming out. They get a chance to kind of, you know, talk they talk. Spit, well, you know, uh, Caster spitting his bars going out. And they basically were saying, you know, we still won't go. We still, we still in this trio thing. We still want that go. This is gonna be the 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 first collision scissor in Chicago. Something Chicago, whatever that's all they're saying. But <clears throat> it was basically kind of stretch out some time. A little bit. You know, get the acclaim to come out to kind of you know get the crowd all hype. Bunch of scissors and things of that nature. I'm not going to do it because I don't know if I'm going to get this video banned, but you know how the rest goes. Um, main event time, we get Samoa Joe with Bullet Club Golds, Jay White, Juice Robinson versus CM FTR, CM Punk FTR. Um, if y'all are familiar with how I do these quick tags and what I say about matches. You knew going in, this was CM Punk's return. As good as this match was, and as exciting it was to see, we knew what the outcome was going to be. 
we knew CMFTR was going to get the dub. Did they make it believable? Did they make it look like uh, BCG and Joe could win? Yes. But did we really know that in the end? It was Punk's return. But it was a solid match. Solid match. Um, Juice took the pinfall. Yeah, Juice got hit with the GTS. He took the pinfall. So... And it was also interesting, too, because I wonder why they got Samoa Joe as well. But that's just me. But that's it. It wasn't a bad match, but you just knew CMFTR was going to win this. Um, but all in all, you know, a solid premiere. I mean, we got to see Punk. We got to see Miro. We got to see Andrade. A title change. Uh, we know to expect Scorpio Sky at some point. We know she didn't have a vignette, at least something I didn't see, but we know at some point to expect Thunder Rosa. Um, so going forward, it's going to be interesting with Collision because at some points it's going to compete with WWE's PLEs, it won't compete with. Money in the Bank, because Money in the Bank this year is taking place in London. So it's an afternoon show. But we know at some point it's going to compete with like SummerSlam. It's going to compete with Survivor Series. It's going to compete with wherever else Saturday night PLEs will be involved. So that's going to be interesting to see. And Lip Dizzle also brought up a good point when we discussed the show. At least with WWE and their PLEs, that's a once a month situation. So you can kind of plan around that. AEW Collision being a Saturday night show is going to be interesting to see how does a Saturday night show truly hold up because Saturdays is a lot of day for a lot of people to go out and have some fun. Especially in the night, like if you went to going out to clubs and bars and things of that nature, it's going to be interesting to see how well those numbers hold up because we see how Rampage numbers kind of dip, especially with that coming on after SmackDown. So we see how that goes with Rampage at times. So it's going to be interesting with Collision because I feel like Collision is going to have to be one of those shows where. They're going to have to throw everything, including the kitchen sink at it at times. Because like I said, if we're comparing it with their wrestling counterparts, you know, once a month. OK. I get three Saturdays in a sense to do whatever I want to. But this one Saturday is a PLE. AEW's case, they're like, nah, we want four. We want four of your Saturdays. If we're, if we're going off with it like that, we want all four of your Saturdays. Maybe five, depending on the month. We'll see. And this is the other aspect that we were saying about are there specific wrestlers that's going to only be on Dynamite? Are there specific wrestlers that are only going to be on Collision? Like, are is the BCC going to show up on Collision? Is the um, the Elite going to be on Collision? Um, Statlander, TBS champion, is she going to be on Collision? Are we going to see um, Cassidy, popular wrestler, on Collision? Or are we going to see Miro, Sky, Thunder Rosa, CM Punk? Are they going to be on Dynamite? You know, so it's going to be interesting going forward. But I enjoyed the show. I enjoyed the presentation. Um, I enjoyed the change up and commentary team with Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGinnis. Um, yeah, I will, I'm definitely going to be thoroughly interested to see how this works out and going forward. That are they going to keep it on Saturday or are they going to eventually? 
see what those numbers look like and potentially move it to another day. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if they got to have it to compete, let it happen. Let it happen. Because at this point, we know the E's fan base is the E's fan base. AE Dubs fan base is the AE Dubs fan base. And you do got people who do like to watch both. And those type of people, like me, are going to have to just figure out. I mean, that's just the way that's going to have to go. But um, overall, solid show. Can't wait to see what it progresses to and uh, to see what happens going forward. Like, are they going to keep that foot on the gas and keep going? You know, so it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see. Shout out to my tag brethren, Lip Dizzle, Jacob Bombastic, Juggernaut 097. And whether you love it, hate it, don't forget to rate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. So thank you. Like, comment, share, subscribe, tag that notification bell. So you know when videos are getting posted. Like my bro, Lil Bizzle, posted a video about him being sick of Charlotte Flair. Now, if you knew him, Dizzle has beef with Charlotte Flair. If you've been here, you know Dizzle has vitriol towards Charlotte Flair. Check the video out. And all the other videos, you know, I might pop up with quick tags per my schedule. Dizzle might pop up with his Dizzle moments. Who knows? Jager might even come back and start doing video. Who knows? But you won't know unless you subscribe and you won't know unless you have the notifications on to know when a video is just bless your life. Yeah, I said it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And once again, if you're new here, thank you for tuning in. If you've been here, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the love, support. We really appreciate y'all, even while we're going through this weird times we're going through with work schedules and everything. But thank you for tuning in. And you know what's coming next. If you've been here, if you're new, got to gotta sign the video off with this. With the greatest hand gesture in wrestling history. But until next time, good people, thank you. And do not forget to tag out. Peace.